Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna do a review on this, my old iPhone 7 from 2016. How does it hold up in late 2022 and 2023? And I wanna approach this from a photography perspective and all of the photographs and video samples that you're gonna see in this video were shot on my iPhone 7. The iPhone 7 was released September 16, 2016. And I think it's fair to label it old because you now have to multiply the seven by two to get to the current model number, the iPhone, what, 14 now. This phone has been sitting in a spare room of my house. I've upgraded my phone several times since then, and I never put it on eBay because the resale value just wasn't that high. But a few weeks back, my iPhone came back into my life. A friend from church had their phone stolen. and I gave them my phone because I knew I had this one as a backup. And I was thinking about what lens review I could do this week. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do my iPhone. In a world where the technology companies are always trying to get us to upgrade to the latest and greatest, what if we actually took a step back in time to an old camera system, well, really an old cell phone like this, and see just how it holds up. And I'll say right off the bat that my results were kind of a mixed bag. I wasn't overwhelmed with how great it was, but I also wasn't disappointed. As a rule, I don't really like to take photographs on my cell phone. I don't like the user experience of having to unlock it, go through a lock screen, password with your finger using your face or whatever and then uh, just the touchscreen experience it's, it's just not for me I prefer a physical dedicated camera but that said I tried to make this review as unbiased as possible and evaluate the camera or the cell phone for the things that it brings to the table so let's talk about price. They don't make these new anymore, but you can get them refurbished on eBay in quote, very good condition for about $100. Now in terms of specs and build, most people are somewhat familiar with iPhones, but let me read some of this. I have the iPhone 7, not the 7 Plus. Right, so this is the smaller version. It has a 4.7 inch screen, which is small for most people, but it's the perfect size for me. It features a single 12 megapixel, one third of an inch sensor with a 28 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view. So this is a pretty wide angle. Now that didn't particularly worry me because I typically shoot with the Ricoh GR3, which has a fixed 28 millimeter equivalent focal length. I should mention that it has a 100 millimeter, about four inches for us Americans, four inch close focusing distance. So you're essentially getting a macro lens in this as well. You can get very close to your subject. I have the one that came in the jet black color scheme, which in my opinion is the best color scheme ever on an iPhone. However, it picks up fingerprints like crazy. I don't know how much I really have to say about the build quality on these because like everybody and their brother has an iPhone or it's equivalent to a premium Samsung phone, right? It's, it's what we've come to expect from an Apple product. Very good build quality. People have mixed reviews as far as how often they crack their phones and things, but I have to give a shout out to Apple for the durability of this phone because I've rocked it like this with no case for several years. I've dropped it countless times and I've never broken it until this week during this review. Apparently it was too much for it. I finally cracked the screen after years and years of use. Now let's talk about handling. As I mentioned, I don't take a lot of photographs on my cell phone, and that's not because I'm one of these deniers who are like camera purists, or like cell phones will never compare to real cameras. Phones are taking amazing photos these days, especially newer phones. I had the iPhone 12 Pro Max and made some beautiful images. However, I'll say that the handling of cell phones is what I don't like about them and what keeps me from shooting on them more. When out photographing, I don't like navigating through a lock screen, adjusting my settings on a touch screen, uh, holding the phone sideways on the tiny little slippery bezels, and then making sure that your finger is out of the way of the, <laughs> out of the way of the lens before pressing that shutter button that's on your screen that you're always wondering if you're shaking the whole thing by doing that. I also shoot a lot of photographs one-handed, and while it can be done on a cell phone, you, you can take a cell phone out of your pocket, raise it up, and get the phone photo you know, with just one hand, it takes some hand gymnastics and it kind of takes the joy out of the experience. So while I can't fault the phone for its handling because it's a multitasking device, taking photos isn't its only purpose, I will say that personally I, pref I prefer physical controls and a, a better grip on a purpose-built camera. Now, probably the most important question is what about the image quality? I knew better than to assume that just because this was an old camera that it would take bad photos. I used to own the A7R2, and that's actually a year older 
than the iPhone 7. And it takes stunning photos, and you'll know that if you've ever used one of those. To tell you the truth, I kind of expected to pick this up, photograph with it for a week, and then to be able to preach a sermon on about, you know, how gear doesn't matter. But what I found out was that gear does matter in some circumstances, and let me explain. First of all, and this might just be a deal breaker right off the bat for people who are serious about photography, is that the iPhone 7 doesn't offer any kind of raw format. You're shooting in JPEG, that's all you've got. Apple's raw format didn't come out until I think the iPhone 12. So that somewhat limits your flexibility to manipulate the files in post-production. In terms of sharpness and detail, I would say that the image quality is good, but it's not great. If you are somebody who doesn't do a lot of pixel peeping and you don't do a lot of heavy post-processing uh, in, in Lightroom or some other software, I think you'll be pretty happy with the images that come straight off of this camera, especially if you're just using it to capture memories. The images retain a solid amount of detail and they look good when you're viewing them back on smaller screens. One thing that the iPhone has taught me is that sensor size does matter to some degree. The 12 megapixels on the one-third of an inch sensor, or I don't exactly know how to say that, one-thirds inch sensor on the iPhone, those 12 megapixels are not equivalent to the 12 megapixels on a larger sensor, say like the 12 megapixels on the original Fujifilm X100, which had an APS-C sensor. If you're in perfect sunny weather, sunny lighting, uh, the iPhone can rival the image quality on some of these larger sensors, but when that lighting is compromised to any degree, even if it's just like an overcast day or you're shooting indoors, you can definitely tell a difference in the detail that's retained. And that limits your ability to crop some of these images. And, and that can be concerning considering you're shooting with such a wide focal length. You've got 28 millimeters. I typically, when I shoot 28 millimeters, am cropping one way or another. The iPhone doesn't give you a whole lot of room to do that. So what about dynamic range? The dynamic range on the iPhone 7 is acceptable. I would say that it's on par with some of the cameras that I've shot from like 2012 and 2013. The shadows retain a pretty decent amount of information and you can bring those shadows up. There's still some detail there. I will say though, the highlights, whew, this was my biggest challenge with shooting this camera was that if you overexpose your highlights, you are not getting them back. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That little slider in Lightroom to pull down the highlights, that will not save you because there's hardly any detail retained in the highlights or in the bright spots. So if you overexpose, you might end up throwing that image away. And so whenever you're going out and shooting, you absolutely have to protect those. Underexpose if you have to, but do not overexpose. Now, in terms of the HDR, I think HDR stands for high dynamic range. It's a uh, computational photography ability that a lot of these new cell phones are using. It's where it's taking multiple images when you press the shutter and it's able to stitch those images together to bring in the details from the brighter spots and from the darker spots and give you a better dynamic range picture overall. The dynamic range in the iPhone 7 is a redeeming quality for sure, and it can help you save a lot of the images that you might otherwise lose or, or dislike. I will say it's not quite as good as some of the newer iPhones, though. They, they do a much better job at it, but it is a helpful feature. Okay, what about bokeh? Well, sadly, this is not a camera phone that's going to be able to bring you a lot of bokeh, even with its f1.8 lens. Because the sensor is so small, I'm finding that even when I get pretty close to my subject, I'm not getting very much background blur. You're certainly not going to blow out your background. There is a little bit, but not a ton. And I'll try to throw some images up that illustrate this. I will say that if you want to see all of these images in a little bit higher resolution, you can check out the written review on my website, and there's a link down in the description below. So let's talk about the iPhone 7's image quality overall. I would say that this is a nice snapshot camera. If you need a photo in a pinch and you aren't super critical and you just want something that's convenient that you can take photos with and save memories, this will do an excellent job for you. Just make sure to protect those highlights. There are a lot of other great features that the, the iPhones have. The first one I would want to mention is autofocus. It's amazing that it's taken the big box camera companies as long to get autofocus that's as good as the iPhone 7. I really had no problems with this. It has no problem autofocusing in photo or video mode. It's quick to recognize faces and it doesn't stutter or stumble at all. It just really does a good job. Video is another really nice feature. iPhones have 
kind of long been regarded as one of the best, if not the best, smartphones for shooting video. And the iPhone 7 is really not an exception to that. No, it's not on par with some of the newest versions, but you can still shoot great, sharp 4K 30 video clips on this camera, and, and they turn out pretty well. And one thing that you may not know is that a lot of really big YouTubers actually use their iPhones to get the B-roll shots in their video. Every once in a while you'll hear one of them admit it, <laughs> but I think a lot more of them do it than, than want to admit it. Image stabilization is another highlight of the iPhone and also of the iPhone 7. One of the reasons I shoot so much with my Olympus system, my EM1 Mark II, is because the image stabilization is great. That said, the image stabilization in the iPhone 7 is as good, if not better, than in my Olympus cameras, and that applies to photo and video mode. Video image stabilization in the iPhone is excellent. Then the final great quality that I'll mention, and there are many others, but just one last one, and that is that your photos auto sync to Lightroom. So because your phone is always connected to the internet, I have my phone to automatically sync my photos to Lightroom through the cloud. So I open up my Lightroom on my computer and they're all there. It's so seamless, it works so well. I wish there was a way to, to get this on every camera that I had so I don't have to mess with SD cards or dongles for file transfers or things like that. Uh, it, it's, it's beautiful for the workflow. I should also mention some not great features and one that really irks me and the reason that I will not buy another iPhone until they fix this <laughs> is the lightning cable. So if you've had an iPhone, you know that they don't use the same USB-C cable as basically all other electronics. They're still using that old lightning cable. So everywhere you go, you have to carry around another cable. That's not really the biggest problem to me. The biggest problem is the file transfer speeds are really slow. I mean, that's, an, that's old technology and Apple won't update it probably for money reasons, uh, but until they update it, I refuse to buy another one. And it, because if you're using a Windows computer like I do to do your editing, getting files off of your iPhone to your Windows computer, it's just a pain. It, there's always errors. It takes forever because the, the data transfer rates are slow on those lightning cables. So it, no, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> the second not so great feature is a little bit more minor than that is, and that is the green dot flare that's present in iPhone video. I'll try to throw up a video on the screen right now that, that demonstrates this. But anytime with an iPhone, it, it almost doesn't matter what generation you're using, anytime you're shooting towards the sun or close to the sun, you'll get this green dot on the screen that is quite distracting. I don't mind flare most of the time in my video, but this is, this is just not pleasant. And if you want to watch a lot of TikTok or Instagram reels, you'll often see this because videos are often filmed with cell phones, uh, specifically iPhones. And then the last not so great thing is shutter delay. I think this may only be a problem on my iPhone because it's getting old and the processor is not as quick as it used to be. I don't think that this is a problem on any of the newer iPhones, but that is that sometimes when you press the shutter, there's a delay between pressing it and the phone actually taking the image. So this has resulted in several worthless images that I just had to throw into the, the trash. Uh, and, and there's nothing to indicate when the photo is actually taken, like the screen doesn't blink when the photo is taken. Uh, and it, this can be a little disconcerting and just can cause some, some issues. This especially happens when the, the lighting isn't great. So in conclusion, you may expect me to bash this and say that it, well, it's, you know, it's old and here's all the other things that you should spend a couple hundred dollars more on to upgrade because they will be worth your money more. But I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to say that for a hundred dollars on the used market, I think you're getting a lot for your money here. This is a, a complete package that takes nice photos, does good video, has nice image stabilization. I mean, can we really complain for, for that kind of a price? If you aren't super critical of your image quality and you just maybe need to take some snapshots, save some memories, take a video here and there, I think you could do much worse than this. This little phone will do an excellent job for you. That said, if you do want to get a little bit more serious about your photography, you could spend that same $100 and buy a used Sony RX100 Mark I. I actually have that camera. I still use it. I really like it. That camera is going to get you better image quality, more dynamic range, raw photo support, a zoom lens, a larger sensor, 
Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't do 4K video, right? but it's, it's definitely a more of a photographer's camera. You're going to get a lot more bang for your buck in the pho photography department. Obviously, you're going to miss out on all those smartphone features, but for a photographic tool, it's a better tool and usability and handling, in my opinion. So the pros for the iPhone 7, price, build quality, the size, right? The, slide that thing in your pocket, carry it around everywhere with you. Good image quality at 28 millimeters. It's easy to use. The user interface is really nice. There's no, there's no horrible camera menus to, <laughs> to dig through. It's got nice video and excellent image stabilization. Cons, I got three here. No raw photo support. A limited ability to crop due to the amount of detail that's retained, especially under not so great lighting conditions. And then handling. It's hard to, it's hard to fault the camera for handling because it's not a purpose built camera, but that's a con definitely for me just in terms of photography. So that's my experience shooting with the iPhone 7. I think it's a great reminder that you can still take great images on older cameras and that the hype that marketing company or marketing departments put behind newer cameras, it, you know, it, maybe there's some truth to it, but they're not always as great as they say. You can be a great photographer even if you only have an iPhone 7 to shoot on. So thanks for watching everybody. Again, if you uh, are interested in the, seeing the images in higher quality, you can see them in the written review on our website. There's a link down in the description below, as well as some other reviews. And a check back to this channel every week, hopefully, for uh, new reviews and the website as well. Remember to subscribe and hit that, that little bell button. That way you're notified every time a new review comes out. All right. Hopefully I will talk to you again next week. Until then.